Hey everyone, today I'm super excited to interview someone I've known for a long time since the start of high school. And while we went to high school together, he actually did something that a lot of people in college struggle to do, which is getting internships. So today he's going to tell us about his academic journey so far, and hopefully his experience and his insights can help you get a head start on your career as well. So yeah, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hey everyone, my name's Aaron. I went to high school with Kevin, as he just mentioned. I'm currently in my third year of software engineering at the University of Waterloo, and I've done a couple of internships in the past, both in high school and in university. Currently, I'm on my fifth university co-op at a tech company in SF. Um, so I'm looking forward to talking with you guys. All right, so now let's dive into your background. What would you say you were most involved in during high school? So actually in high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I had a lot of different interests. I had some in geography and history, I had some in biology, I had some in computer programming. Um, so initially, I was super into biology. I was, I wanted to kind of be in the medical field. So the best route at that time was to do science fair. So uh, I would grind out science fair projects every year, uh, all in different areas, but mostly it was in the area of uh, improving diagnosis for Alzheimer's disease. And something that happened in this uh, science fair for one particular year, I believe it was grade 10, was I decided to incorporate a little bit of bioinformatics into my project. Um, but I was using bioinformatics in order to take a massive data set of genes and figuring out which genes could be the best um, indicator for Alzheimer's disease. And after about a year of doing this project, I was able to do quite well with it. I realized like, wait a sec, like the math and the programming part is far more interesting than the biology part. Um, and so this kind of made me realize maybe programming is a better fit for me and therefore I kind of stuck with it. Uh, I did computer science as well in high school and they decided, you know what, I'm going to go with this and that's what I decided to do for university. Nice. So what kind of success did you see in science fair for, for this project? Um, so for science fair, uh, starting in about grade nine, I started to get awards at the city level science fair. So I was getting awards in uh, just like gold medals as well as like uh, like best math award, best like biology awards, and I was able to go to Canada wide science fair. And at Canada wide science fair, I was getting awards for stats, uh, for programming, and all that. And then uh, because my project was relatively unique, I was able to also get a spot at Team Canada for ICEF. So in 2019, I went to ICEF in Arizona. Um, I got like a small honorable mention for stats, but for me, that I think that's a win in the books because I wasn't even expecting to go to ISEF. I see. So was this around the same time that you were looking for internships as well, or did you start like way before that? Yeah, so it kind of goes back to what I was saying about my initial goals in high school, which was I wanted to be, uh, you know, go into the medical field. And for those of you who don't know, like being a research or being involved in research is quite important. So initially, I was just trying to find uh, opportunities to exercise some research uh, capabilities. Um, so that's kind of how this all played in. Like with Science Fair, I learned about these internships that I could do for research. But then when I was doing Science Fair, I realized, wait, maybe research is not the best fit for me. Maybe it's actually working at a company uh, or as an intern. So that's kind of how that all lined up. And how would you say those internships got you to where you are right now today? Oh, those internships were like super, super helpful. Uh, I think one thing that is important for people to realize is uh, the earlier you start with these things and preparing, the better. Because it's kind of like a virtuous cycle um, where one thing builds on another, which builds on another, and you get to like farther and farther places at a quicker pace as long as you're continually improving yourself and figuring out what works best for you. Um, and so for me, because I was able to do these internships in high school, I learned a lot of skills uh, and a lot of industry relevant things. And when I went to university, I remember in my first co-op search at Waterloo, um, when we were all trying to find internships, I was actually able to have a small bit of a head start because of my experiences in high school. Um, and that helped a huge amount because I remember other people in my class, unfortunately, were like having a bit of a tough time, especially with the pandemic. But for me, like I, ha I felt quite fortunate that I was able to actually go through these internships and learn skills to help me get through. Mm -hmm. For sure. So now let's walk through the three internships you did after grades 10, 11, and 12. So let's start from the very first one after grade 10. Sure. What did you do to get that internship? 
Yeah, so uh, in Canada, there's this um, this well-known summer camp type of thing called SHAD. Um, so what they do is they will actually pair you up with the university and you along with about 40 or 50 other people would go um, to this university. And as part of that, at that time, they had internships uh, linked with the program, which they would kind of just link you with this local company. That's no longer the case anymore, but at my time, that was the case. Um, and so this first internship was uh, was kind of part of that program. It was at Critical Mass, which is a small design consultancy type of company uh, that was based in my hometown in Calgary. Mm -hmm. And can you talk about the interviews you did for that job? It was pretty much just have a resume. Uh, and as long as you could be like a normal person, I think it would be okay with you. Like it wasn't like the fact that it was already vetted by Shad meant that they knew that I was like, you know, decent uh, and was not gonna be problematic so they were like yeah sure um just come in and work for like a few weeks um yeah gotcha can you also talk about your work experience at critical mass yeah so i believe my official position was like ux design intern so it wasn't actually a lot of coding it was actually more about learning about the user experience of particular products in a portfolio so basically in calgary there was this national museum of music and they wanted an app to help guide visitors through different exhibits. And I wasn't really responsible for coding that out, but they did want some initial work on the typical user journey of someone who's going into the museum and is looking for these exhibits. Uh, and so uh, my mentors would, you know, they just gave us a lot of UX research things, which was really helpful looking back at it, because that kind of helped me prep my mindset on how to approach products with the user first mentality. Um, so I was reading these books, and then I went to like the museum itself, did my own research, and then we kind of compiled these user journeys uh, and presented it to the UX leadership. It is really short. It was only like four weeks uh, in my summer, so it wasn't too big, uh, but it still was a good good start in learning how to like deal with tech. That's awesome. So now let's fast forward to grade eleven. What did you do that summer, and how did you get that job? Right, so grade 11 was the year where I was kind of going full heads into science fair. And I was still in mentality, okay, maybe med school is something I wanna do, so let me get some research experience. So in Calgary, there's this program called HIRIS. This program basically uh, connects high school students who are looking to do uh, research in the biological field with professors at U of C. Um, and so I kind of applied because I thought my past experience with science fair as well as my interest kind of in like biology and programming could be a, a unique fit for this program. So I went into this, uh, I was able to get accepted and I got this really interesting project where basically um, we were looking at sarcomas. So for those of you who don't know, that's basically like a particular type of cancer. And we were doing the same thing I was doing with Alzheimer's disease, where we wanted to diagnose sarcomas in a more efficient way. Uh, and one of the things that they wanted to do was they wanted to kind of take gene expressions uh, and see if they could kind of identify which combinations of genes could best detect uh, whether someone has a sarcoma or not, or whether they have a particular type. Uh, and another issue that they found was that oftentimes with gene expressions, like you have different machines, right, that are doing the gene expressions. So it's very hard to correlate the differences between different machines because they have different methodologies. So they wanted a, a technique to kind of measure gene expressions and diagnose uh, patients, despite the fact that they could be using different machines to take that gene expression. Um, and so I was using a lot of math for that project. Um, basically the same math you use for like Netflix recommendation searches and all of that, it was the same type of math I was using. So it's really cool, really cool type of math. I was using a lot of R uh, and I built out a small project to kind of demonstrate, hey, like if we were to use this method, we could actually diagnose people pretty efficiently despite the fact they're using different machines. Uh, did a like, small research presentation as well. And that was kind of my experience there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. So now let's talk about grade 12. How'd you get that job? How'd you find the experience? Right, yeah. So by this time uh, in grade 12, I've kind of figured out, especially after doing that previous high risk internship, that programming is what I'm more interested in rather than bio. So I also wanted to kind of develop industry skills. So I wanted to find uh, some kind of small company where I could kind of 
learn a lot more and develop those skills. And at that time, I was really interested in data science and machine learning. So that was my particular passion. Uh, so after I was you know, done with all my college apps, I remember I was like, okay, I gotta find a way to get into this, uh, get into the startup world. And so what I did was I, I saw in Calgary, like there's a lot of AI meetups. I was generally curious about AI. So I was like, you know what, let me just go for a few of these. Uh, so I went for about like five or 10 of these in Calgary and I got to know the person who started to organize these meetups. Uh, he and I started chatting and uh, I think like I had one off comment at one of these meetings being like, you know, uh, like, hey, I'm looking for like these internships. Do you happen to know any company that's looking for some? And he's like, don't worry, just send me your resume. I can, I know there's a couple of companies trying to hire uh, some new grab, not new grab, but like entry level people. Maybe you could kind of fit in. He actually came back with a couple of companies who were interested. And so I went for one company because I thought they were doing something particularly interesting. Uh, their name is Stellar Algo. Uh, basically, they are combining data science and analytics for sports teams. Uh, these sports teams want to know like what do fans want in their experience, what type of things are they buying in their concession stands, all sorts of things. Uh, and they were based in Calgary, so I was like, this seems like a really good fit. Um, and so I interviewed with them, got into the job. Specifically, I was working on basically taking uh, every fan every fan club has like, these forums, and I was responsible for just doing basic sentiment analysis on these forums and just determining whether this will impact prices for tickets, uh, which is kind of a weird correlation, but it worked out in the end. So I was doing a little bit of, of machine learning for that, some stats, uh, coded up like a brief, a, a very small proof of concept, showed it off to our CEO and our CTO, and they were relatively impressed. And I think they've taken my model into production. So that was kind of like a small experience there, but I think that was very useful because I learned a lot of like this industry leading NLP data science um, techniques and I was able to take that into my future co-ops. So, yeah. I see. So it sounds like from your last two internships, you got a leg up because you were pretty good at and pretty passionate about machine learning. So how'd you get started in that? And like, what'd you do to eventually like hone those skills? Um, so I think what happened was it all started in chat. So at Shad, uh, at Shad, what happened was I was, you know, talking with like Shad at that time had like a lot of really smart people. I'm sure there's still smart people at Shad, but like, at that time, I remember there's like some particularly remarkable people. Uh, and one of them was super into ML or AI. Uh, and they're also, they're all from Ontario. So for those of you who don't know, like Calgary is from Alberta, which is a much smaller province in Canada than Ontario. And so a lot of the opportunities in tech uh, often come to Ontario. So I had no idea what was going on in tech. Uh, so when I went to Shad, a lot of these, uh, all of my friends were informing me about these different things. Um, and so one of them actually specifically was super into ML and AI. And he was teaching me like, hey, you could like combine ML with your science for stuff. And I got somewhat interested. So I remember at Shad, I would like reserve some time where I would just like code out small things in R, learning basic stats models and like a little bit of machine learning. Um, and then in high school, I was like, this is a really cool field. Let me dive deeper into it. So um, I what I did is I started off with Kaggle. I, I think they're still around, but Kaggle was basically like this platform where you can- You mean like the, the data science competitions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would do data science competitions. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I never won any of them, but I was just like, doing small challenges and, and notebooks. Well, I mean, um, I didn't know what they were until college, so, so you're yeah, yeah, pretty no, good I, there. <laughs> I knew this, that, it's all because of those people in chat, right? I wouldn't have known anything if it, was, if it wasn't for them. Mm -hmm. And so I was doing that, I learned some of these techniques, and then I just started experimenting with at Science Fair. Uh, like my first few attempts didn't really go anywhere, but I slowly got the hang of how to like build these models. And then I sort of started uh, to, you know, go places, so yeah. So today when you're looking back at these experiences, would you say you made any big mistakes or did you have any like major regrets here? I mean, there are, like looking back, you always find things you could have done better in. Like for example, right now, I'm not really that into ML or AI. Um, and so 
if I wanted to, if I were to try and travel back, I would have told my grade 12 self, like, hey, like, maybe don't look into data science or ML just yet. Try to learn basic software engineering skills. Like, I didn't really know, I didn't have to use Git. I didn't have to um, use, like, different IDEs or, like, the terminal or anything. Like, it's just very basic Python notebooks. I'd have told my grade 12 self, like, hey, maybe just choose, like, a more basic software engineering job and learn those initial skills first, rather than having to wait uh, until your first co-op for people that are looking for high school internships, like focus on those basic software engineering skills first, rather than going for like high flying ML or AI type of internships or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So now I finally want to ask for some last words of advice. So given all that you know now about looking for internships, what would you tell a high schooler who perhaps has like a lot of passion for, I don't know, computer science, but doesn't have the skills yet and they want to look for their first internship? What would you advise them to do? So here's how I would approach it. I think the first thing is you got to find some sort of unique aspect of your own journey that you can leverage on. So for me, that was science fair, right? And developing my programming skills through science fair was the first indicator that was kind of like a green flag for companies to be like, okay, so this person clearly knows how to learn by themselves uh, and is able to just go and be self-directed. I think proving that to companies is the first aspect. And so building out small personal projects, being part of competitions. Uh, if you're into programming competitions, that would be also like a great way of showcasing people like, hey, I know what I'm doing. I have these skills and I can learn by myself. Uh, once you have that kind of basic underlying foundation, what I would do next is I would kind of scope out companies in your local area um, and find companies that are small-ish. If you are looking for these companies, look for people that are mentors who kind of know what they're doing and can kind of guide high school students. Um, and so I would scope out a couple of these and then I would try to find ways to contact these companies. So for me, that was through these meetups. Cold emailing is another great way of uh, getting in contact with these companies. Uh, and then once you have that, um, then it's kind of like interview preparation. Uh, in high school, it's mostly behavioral. I don't think they'll ever ask you anything too technical, or even if they do, it's more like explain a concept rather than doing some sort of coding question. So how would you advise them to look for skills that help them stand out? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. I think uh, one of the things that you mentioned in one of your past videos actually about your reflection on the university process was the passion, right? So I think passion is somewhat important in developing that. So find some interest that you have and then try to like layer on skills that you can add on to that passion. So for example, let's say if you're super interested in hockey or basketball, uh, maybe try building out small projects around that interest and use that as a motivator to learn these other skills. Um, and I'd say also like look at, you know, job postings and see what kind of skills are looking for. Um, so certain companies might be looking for like, oh, do you know TypeScript? Do you know Docker? Do you know Rust? Do you know Go? And these kind of give you an indication of what are what are the technologies people are looking for, and then you can start to learn that by yourself. Um, and also, you know, I think in high school it's particularly great to be in competitions. Um, I think being in a competitive environment really forces you to like build these skills. Uh, and so, you know, go free with competitions. Obviously, don't take it too seriously. Think of it as a learning opportunity. It would be great if you could win those, but. Um, that's a whole other conversation, but I think competitions are a great way of learning these skills and setting yourself out from the pack because if you are able to win them, that shows that you are relatively strong at whatever you're doing. Uh, and so I would suggest that's also a great opportunity for you to, to exercise. I also want to preface this by saying that like I've been in university, uh, many of my friends don't didn't have a high school internship and they did completely fine. In fact, arguably better than me. So I would say that like, this is not, it's not the be all end all if you don't get an internship uh, at high school. In fact, I would highly recommend in your last summers of high school, take that as our time to, um, you know, hang out with friends, have fun, because in university that might not, you might not have that opportunity. So um, yeah, so that would kind of be my final advice. Uh, but if you are if you are looking for these things, you're well ahead of the game. But don't worry if you can't get them; it's totally normal, and you're still defined. Yeah, that's really good advice. So yeah, hopefully Aaron's journey can help you get an internship as well, especially if you're a high schooler. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Peace.